Spatial recordings allow viewers to move within them and freely choose their viewpoint. For example, NBA 360, Minecraft and Fortnite recordings allow the viewer to move through the scene, choose their perspective and skip through the recording. This gives viewers more control over their experience but also puts a burden on them to use this freedom effectively. Let's take as an example a spatial virtual reality recording of a kitchen scene to illustrate this problem. The viewer of such a recording can look anywhere and explore. For example, the viewer might wonder who put the can on the counter or where did the can end up? To find the answer, the viewer might scrub a timeline or fast forward through the recording. However, this makes it easy to miss events as well as challenging to follow moving objects. In the case of large fast forward speeds, it can even cause nausea. Is there a better way of navigating spatial recordings? We propose direct manipulation of objects within the scene to navigate through time. By selecting an object, the viewer can step through the moments where the object changed. For example, by selecting a dirty pot, the viewer can see who put it in the sink or who cooked with it. The viewer can also reveal the trajectories of objects that change location and directly manipulate them to move through time. Our techniques are based on two key ideas. The first key idea is that the viewers are interested in moments of change. For example, a viewer of a spatially recorded basketball game might be interested in the moment that the ball changes trajectory to see if a player touched it before it went out of bounds. The second key idea is that we make the direct manipulation of changing objects central to navigating through time. Instead of having to use a timeline, the user can directly interact with the objects within the scene to navigate. We design the who put that there temporal navigation system by building upon these two ideas. To enable such object-based navigation, we first need to track each object's change of location, appearance, configuration, and its interactions with other objects of avatars. Viewers can then select the objects and preview these changes in two ways, by stepping through notable changes or by showing the object's trajectory, which indicates the change in location. These previewed changes can then be used for navigating through time. Stepping through object's changes works by hovering over an object and pressing left or right on the thumbstick to preview what happened to the object before or after their current time in the spatial recording. The preview is then rendered in a transparent sphere showing the selected moment as a looping animation. We also show a contextual indicator that directs the user to the preview change and indicates the relative time to it. Scrubbing objects trajectories works by selecting an object to toggle its trajectory and then scrubbing along it or jumping at any point at the trajectory. By doing this, the viewer moves to the time in the spatial recording when the object was at the selected position. The viewers can also reveal the trajectories of objects in another way. By enabling the trajectory sphere, the viewer can scan the environment to see all the trajectories that passed through it. This can help find objects that have already left the scene or to find objects that were used at the specific location. In addition to the object-based navigation techniques, our temporal navigation system also includes a timeline and a conventional media controls, such as fast forward, rewind, play and pause. Navigating through time by direct manipulation of objects within the scene has a number of benefits. It allows for easy mapping of intentions to actions. If a user is interested in who put that there, they can select that and quickly find the answer. It previews the changes in the scene. So instead of previewing the changes in a separate picture-in-picture -picture view, the previews are 
at its actual location and at their actual scale. It integrates coarse and fine-grained navigation. Spatiotemporal trajectories naturally have higher resolution when more change is happening and lower when the objects are static. It supports sense-making by quick query of objects, scanning of the scene, and discovering of causal sequences. To learn how users experience object-based navigation, we evaluated the hoopput at their system in a think-aloud study with 11 participants. In particular, we were interested in whether the system was easy to use, understandable, and useful. Participants were given a 22-minute long spatial recording and a set of sense-making questions. Questions such as, what happened to the red mug? Or, why was a hamburger thrown out of the window? To answer the questions, participants had to navigate to the relevant parts of the recordings, either by stepping through objects' changes, by using the object's trajectories, or by using the timeline. In all cases, the participants could also use conventional media controls, such as play, pause, fast forward, and rewind. Three topics emerged from the thematic analysis of the Think Aloud study and the end interviews. We named them being there, making sense, and having fun. The participants expressed that object-based navigation techniques felt more like being there while using a timeline was more like watching a movie. One participant mentioned that using the object-based te techniques felt like playing a game, even though the possible manipulations of objects were constrained to the recorded ones. When using objects' trajectories to complete the sense-making tasks, participants also mentioned a greater understanding of what had happened and the context around it. One participant compared using the timeline to reading the ending of a book to find out what happened and using object trajectories to reading the full book and seeing how it happened. Most of the participants also mentioned that using object-based navigation was fun, interesting and cool. Participants were quick to learn and use the full functionality of the system despite most of them having little or no prior VR experience. Object-based techniques did require more explanation than timeline and media controls, as participants were familiar with the latter two from traditional video recordings. However, all participants were able to use the object-based techniques well enough to answer all the sense-making questions. We believe that using direct manipulation techniques for temporal navigation shows promise and can be especially useful for spatial recordings. However, there are limitations to the presented concept, the who put that their system that exemplifies it and the evaluation of the system. First, direct manipulation techniques might not be suitable in all scenarios. Our concept requires active engagement with a scene which can become exhausting or cumbersome in cases of complex queries. Second, the who put that there temporal navigation system is only one instance of the presented concept. It does not track, preview, and allow navigation by all possible changes that could happen to objects and avatars. It also previews these changes in two specific ways. Tracking more changes or previewing them in a different way might work better. Third, our think aloud evaluation has limited generalizability as we only tested one scenario and recording duration. For a more comprehensive evaluation of the usability of specific techniques, a comparison of them in the different scenarios would be needed. Despite these limitations, we believe that using direct manipulation with spatial recordings to control time has many benefits and should be explored further. We envision similar interactions as presented to be possible in augmented reality in the near future. Navigating through training materials that come in the form of spatial recordings could be especially useful. Apart from AR use cases, complementing spatial game replay systems with some of the presented direct manipulation techniques could also prove useful.